thank you, choir, and we wish you a Merry Christmas, and thank you for coming to our candlelight service tonight. Let's stand and greet one another in the name of Jesus. Thank you, guys. If you would, just remain standing, and let's, uh, we want to spend just a little bit of time with the Father as we begin, as we continue in our time of worship tonight. And uh, as we pray, I want to ask you, if you would, if you would just join me in prayer. Instead of you listening to me pray tonight, I want to invite us to join together as one heart and one spirit just to pray and, and list some requests and some things up to the Lord just to honor Him tonight. And uh, so let's just spend some time with the Lord. I'm going to kind of guide you through this time here in the next few minutes. If you would close your eyes and as you begin to close your eyes and you begin to focus upon the Father, I want to ask you if you would just to take a moment and praise God for Jesus. This is a time of year where Jesus came and changed everything. Just thank God for the incredible, precious gift of Jesus, what he means in your life. The lives all through the ages that have been transformed. As you continue to pray, would you just thank Jesus for being the hope of the world? For being the only answer, the only truth the only way. As you continue to speak to God, just allow Him to speak to your heart. In this Christmas season of 2010, would you thank Him for your salvation? The radical transformation that's been in your life and the fact that you are no longer separated from our King, that you're going to spend eternity with Him. Just thank Him for that. Praise Him for that joy and that hope and that renewed life. Lord Jesus, there is nothing like our salvation. Nothing like our relationship with you tonight. We just honor you. We praise you for that. Church family, tonight as you continue to focus upon your salvation and what Jesus did for you, I want to ask you to think about someone in your family, your, your co-workers, your friends, your neighbors around you that is yet to begin a relationship with Jesus. And I want to ask you on this candlelight service night in 2010 for you just to go before the Father and just plead for their salvation. As you're lifting that person to the Father, would you ask Him to give you boldness and wisdom and how to share His love with that co-worker, that friend, that family member, the person who so desperately needs a touch from our Savior. Father, there are so many people who need to know you. Tonight we stand as a body of believers that most of us have started that relationship because of what you've done in our life, Lord. We didn't really do anything. You did it all. And you called us, Lord, and we heard your voice and we accepted a new life. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, the Bible tells us that you inhabit the praise of your people. And, Lord, there is no better sound than when your children is calling out your name. So church family tonight, as we continue to focus upon our Savior in this time together, would you just call out Jesus, just out loud, for all of us to hear, and most importantly for Jesus to hear, just call out Jesus. 
Call him by all the names that you know of in the Bible. Messiah, our Savior, our Prince of Peace, is our King. Just continue to call out Jesus and just let him be honored tonight in your praise. Just imagine you standing before him and you can't say anything other than to call out his name. Lord Jesus, we're speechless when we see your face and we come into your presence and we don't know what to say other than you're amazing. Lord, you're worth everything and we thank you for all you've done for us and how you've changed us. And Lord, on this Christmas of 2010, Lord, may you do a fresh and a deep and exciting work as you continue to make us what you would have us to be in your image and change us and, Lord, draw us even closer to you. Lord, this night as we stand before you as your children, Father, we pray that in everything that we do in this room tonight, Lord, that you will be honored, that you will know that your children are lifting your praise and we are giving you everything we have. For, Lord, without you, there's no reason for us to even gather tonight. So, Lord Jesus, we just simply say again, you are an amazing, amazing God. We love you, cherish you, we honor you, we bless you, we praise you. And our Lord, we thank you for all that you're going to use us for during this Christmas season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be seated. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, and he did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had a mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Would you stand please as we sing together?
you please be seated? And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went from, up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Right. 
the stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appears and his soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn.
Thank you. Please be seated. In Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 15, the Bible says, When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them, but Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying God and praising Him for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. You know, when you think about the Christmas story, if you don't have a moment where you think it all sounds a little bit crazy, you've never taken a moment to really ponder everything that's taking place. There's been 400 years of silence where God has not sent a prophet, there hasn't been any miracles, and all of a sudden, all of this stuff begins to happen with Zechariah and Elizabeth and Mary and Joseph and angels appearing. And there's a part of you that goes, well, yeah, God can do anything. But from a human perspective, when you think about all that is taking place in this moment and what we celebrate, it's no wonder that it says that when the shepherds told them, people wondered. How, how can this be? And what does this mean? And how could it happen? And, and everything. And, and, and so the response of the shepherds as they're leaving, of glorifying and praising God. You know, when you grow up in church, you lose some of that wonder. And you lose some of that amazement and some of that childlike faith and just not being able to wrap your mind around everything and just having a moment where you sit before God and you praise Him and you glorify Him and you enjoy what it is that He's done for us. God is all over this thing. This coming of the baby Jesus was not an accident that happened. God predicted it hundreds of years before it would happen and He was the one who orchestrated it. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit doing all of this work to save us in a way that we knew it was Him. It was not the work of, an, of a human being, but it was the work of a holy God who loved people who were far from Him. And the other thing I love about this is that the first people He tells are the lowly, poor, smelly, outcast shepherds. The very first people He chooses to announce the birth of His Son to are the poorest people in the social, social system in Israel. It just screams to us that the gospel is not just for white middle class America, but it's for red, yellow, black, brown, and white, rich and poor, healthy and non-healthy. It is for everyone because the reality is the shepherds weren't the only people who were poor that day. The whole world was poor. The whole world was poor in their sin. I remember preaching in Kenya a couple of years ago and to many prisoners and being able to say to them, do you realize that if you trust Christ today, you will be richer than any American who's sitting in their house right now with heaters and everything else, and you're here in this crummy old prison, you'll have everything you need. That's why the Bible says that riches profit for nothing on the day of judgment, but righteousness delivers from death. Jesus is our gift of righteousness. He is our way to be brought back into relationship with God forever. And the way He did it is crazy, but it's good. And it is our hope and it is our joy. And so I encourage you this Christmas season to take a minute to ponder like Mary did. To ponder these things in your heart and allow it to lead you in to worship just between you and the Father and thanking Him for what He's done to save us.
Let's stand and sing joy to the world.
From Matthew chapter 2, we learn that now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. And when Herod the king heard it, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he began to inquire of them where the Christ was to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and ascertained from them the time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. And when you've found him, report to me that I too may come and worship him. And having heard the king, they went their way, and behold, the star, which they had seen in the east, went on before them until it came and stood over where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And they came into the house and saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and they worshipped him. And opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their own country by another way. As Josh was reading the story about the shepherds, I was thinking, Jesus get, God gave his first announcement of the birth of Christ to those who were the lowest. When he called the wise men from the east, he gave his announcement to those who were from the highest. When he spoke to the shepherds, he spoke to those who were the closest by. When he spoke to the wise men, he spoke to those who were the farthest away. If there's one thing that Christmas means to me, it is that Christ was given for the nations. His very name, Jesus, means God saves. And that gift of salvation was offered to those who were rich and poor, who were close, and who are far away. Amen to Christmas. That's what I say. Would you stand again, please?
Our last reading tonight is found from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 and 6. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And then the Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. <clears throat> this was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God to those who believe in his name, 
who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When Jesus was born, the light of the world came into the darkness. And Jesus said to you and me, you are the light of the world. So as we leave tonight, the candles remind us that he is the light, and we are to be a reflection of the light of Jesus this Christmas and all throughout the year. In a moment, our ushers will bring the flame down the aisle and light the person's candle on the end. If you would share it with the, the flame with the person next to you, then push your cup up over the flame, and we'll sing Silent Night together in a moment. Again, without the instruments, please. Without the instruments.
as that music continues to play, would you leave the auditorium in silence, please? Think about the light of the world being Jesus. Jesus.